I'm Dr. Jim Coyle, and this final tutorial in social work practice with families focuses on evaluating family therapy. This includes knowing what family therapy research has said about family therapy and work with families, um, choosing to use family therapy as appropriate um, method of helping families, as well as evaluating our family interventions. There has been a significant amount of family therapy research, and it has been able to tell us quite a bit about using family therapy with clients. Uh, some of the things that it, uh, research has found is that no specific model seems to be better than other models overall. Uh, we know that operationalizing family therapy variables can be challenging. Uh, some models seem to be more effective for accomplishing specific outcomes. And this effectiveness is related to the problem be addre being addressed, the family and worker characteristics, as well as the family therapy process. Um, Research has suggested that family therapy is effective with substance abuse, conduct disorder, and child behavior, major mental illness such as depression, and couple distress or intimate violence. We also know that family therapy is a valid method for helping our clients, but that focusing on fidelity and specific measurable outcomes does not tend to match real life practice, where we tend to change things around as family needs change and as we evaluate what's happening in the family. Uh, the family process, family therapy process factors are difficult to measure um, with uh, so many people involved and different uh, methods that the therapist or worker is using. There can be a lot of uh, changes and a lot of things going on that are difficult to process and to get a sense of how do we effectively measure. Research also suggests that when you're working with families, the worker family alliance is key. That families' ability to work is important for success and that worker experience isn't enough, that workers need to continually seek feedback from families and uh, implementing improvement from what it has been going on. Being able to address that is necessary. Worker positivity and ability to induce hope tends to improve the outcome. Sometimes environmental change outside the workers or the family's control is necessary for positive outcomes. This fits with the third order change that we discussed previously. Knowing family therapy is effective is different from knowing how family therapy works. And that kind of process of family therapy is something that's still being studied. Ethically speaking, we need to evaluate family therapy outcomes and some tips for how to go about kind of thinking in this way and doing this is to first discuss evaluation from the beginning. Ask families how they will know when things are better. Describe your outcomes and measurable goals. Use scaling questions. For example, on a scale of one to 10, how often does the presenting problem occur? And how does this compare to previous measures? Assume positive outcomes will occur. Don't say if the goal occurs, say when the goal occurs, what will you see happening? And regularly congratulate the family about the progress they're making and focus on progress that is somehow observable and not just doing a good job because uh, you know, you're trying. It's identifying very specific details because sometimes the families um, or any client um, have a difficult time recognizing how different things are from where they started off.
Furthermore, you can link improve family functioning with goal attainment and make the connections that help families see this. You can assess whether your intervention methods are appropriate and effective by looking at the process of family therapy and how what you're doing, how is that helping, um, and um, kind of assessing how that seems to be working. Recognize that family may be doing the best they can given external influences. As I mentioned previously, sometimes we have to take into consideration how third order change is maybe needed. The impact of communities and neighborhoods and families and what's going on with them, the impact of racism or oppression um, can make helping families much more difficult. And so we have to ask ourselves, how much do we need to address what is going on? How do we have to adapt the methods we're using because of what's happening in the environment? A good example of that now is the pandemic and uh, certainly some of the uh, employment opportunities and lack of employment opportunities that are uh, occurring as a result of that. Uh, consider whether outcome measures need to focus on the family as a unit or as a whole, or whether individual improvement may be sufficient. And this is a very complicated question, and often the easiest way to do this is to ask the family. Discuss with them what do they think is going to be a sufficient outcome that they can be feel good about and happy with. Ultimately speaking, when you're working with families, you need to choose some type of model to work with them. And you want to choose a model that's the most appropriate intervention. So initially, you want to compare individual family or group treatments. And to do this, you follow agency guidelines, you consider your own competence, your ability to do these types of treatments. Um, what best helps the client family, which focus family, individual group or something else may best fit the, the, the client circumstances. Uh, can you do family therapy with an individual client? Well, the short answer is yes, you can. If the family goal tends to be appropriate for what the person's talking about. And if the individual client seems to be a kind of a family influencer who is really focused on helping the family and uh, improve some aspect of their life. In choosing a model of family intervention, initially it can be helpful to learn one model well so that you get a sense of how to work with families in this particular way and to feel comfortable with doing it so you don't have to second guess everything that you're doing and try and figure it out. It becomes a little bit easier if you at least use one model through your work with families and it becomes uh, you know, something that makes sense to you. You often choose a model that matches your professional views and your way of working with clients. Yet it's important to recognize that the model we use needs to match client family needs and beliefs. No one model works for all clients, all families. And sometimes you're going to need to adjust what you do uh, because it doesn't seem to fit well or the interventions that you're doing don't seem to be working very well. Finally, you need to consider the research and the evidence how well and how valid is this particular model and how does it fit for the particular family and, and their circumstances. Here's a number of examples to kind of help you uh, conceptualize this. Uh, sometimes it can be helpful to use couples therapy for a retired male's depression because of the benefit from wife's support and motivation. This can be particularly true when, you know, the wife has taken kind of the leading role in her family for family health and for getting family members uh, uh, you know, the resources that they need. On the other hand, if an individual male came to me for depression and presented willingness to work on this himself, 
I certainly wouldn't say, well, you should bring in your wife. But sometimes if they're struggling and having difficulty recognizing this, or their wife comes to help out in the first place, it can be very, uh, you know, that's a good way to, to um, kind of use that power of the relationship in order to uh, have uh, kind of have interventions occur. Using structural family therapy for families with young children and parents who tend to think concretely also can tend to fit well. Uh, structural family therapy works on kind of helping the parents get a working coalition and very specific rules that can be, uh, that can be easily measured and easily um, kind of done with young children. And so this can help families who are really struggling and are willing to take a, a worker's advice in terms of doing things without necessarily having to think about all of the repercussions and how it's all working for themselves. And so this can be a very helpful thing to do. Um, narrative therapy for a family with a member in hospice can be um, also fit very well because when someone is in hospice, generally family histories and family stories and going over things fits very well with that particular stage of development. And it can also help family members cope with the ultimate, uh, the uh, impending loss of their family member to kind of think back to those times, to think back to, uh, and the memories of all of that close relationships that they've had, or sometimes even the struggles, but where it fits in context. Experiential therapy for families who have functioned well, but recent environmental or developmental changes have led them to be more disconnected. Uh, sometimes there's so much going on with families that they're all off in their own individual kind of world and doing things, but they're feeling disconnected and they're not quite sure what's happening. Well, experiential uh, family therapy works very well with this, with its focus on honest communication of feelings and connecting subsystems. So this can be a very helpful thing to do in this particular circumstance. Finally, multi-systemic or wraparound therapy for multi-problem families, particularly those who may need services from several agencies or programs, tends to fit well. Uh, having one worker who's trying to do everything for this, for the multiple needs that these families have, tends not to work well and can lead to things getting left out as well as possible worker burnout. A team approach tends to fit much better when we're uh, trying to work with these types of families where there's a lot going on. One of the things that's helpful is as we take a look at all of this, being flexible is a real asset where we can take a look at what are the pros and cons and how can we move from one model to the other. And this leads into our final task. Consider what you've read in the textbook and what you've heard in this tutorial, as well as what you've learned in your own experiences. We've been talking a lot about different types of families and the different types of family therapy and other types of models working with families and how they can all come together. So jot down your ideas about your thoughts. How do you choose assessment and intervention models when you're working with clients, particularly with families? How do you measure success with clients? What tools or methods do you use? What can help you do this? Pulling all of this together, we're gonna, you know, I, I encourage you to share your ideas with your classmates during an in-class discussion, because this can help us connect all of the learning that we've been talking about in this course, all the aspects of working with families, the different models, the different interventions, the different ways of knowing what to do, when, and how to assess and whether it's working. And so it kind of brings it all together. And I look forward to having this discussion with you in class.